Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. And coming up here on today's show, I'm going to be looking at the Raiders' 53-man roster projection after <clears throat> Denzel Good retired on Monday. Because, I mean, this was definitely a eye-popping, a little bit of a surprise for everyone out there in the nation. Yes, Good did take a little bit less money, and you saw him tweeting out a few things, so maybe you thought that it could potentially happen. But since it did, I figured I'd give you an updated look at a brand new Raiders 53-man roster projection video. The way that this is going to go, I'm going to start with the quarterbacks, and I'm going to work my way all the way down to the defense, and I'm going to count it at home with y'all. So here first are the quarterbacks. <clears throat> Derek Carr, Nick Mullins, Jarrett Stidham, also Chase Garbers, the UDFA out of California. If you followed the show for a while, you know that I believe that this team ends up keeping three QBs. We know Derek Carr is going to be the number one. Nick Mullins, I believe, will be number two. If this team decides to keep only two QBs, I believe the best would be with Mullins because he's just the superior player at that position. Yes, Jared Stidham does know the offense, but that's actually probably why he ends up making the team so that they can have better overall practices. Let's now go to the running back room here. Jacobs, Kenyon, Drake, Zamir White, Jacob Johnson. You also got some other players down there below with Britton Brown, who they drafted in the seventh round out of UCLA. Amir Abdullah, one of the most forgotten names out there because, well, Devontae Adams trade happened on his day. And then Brandon Bolden was brought in from New England, so you got a good pass catcher here. I think for the Raiders, you know that they're going to keep Johnson at fullback, but I just see this unit only keeping four running backs. Jacobs looks really good at training camp already. Kenyon Drake is healthy. Brandon Bolden's the pass catching specialist, had over 40 receptions last season. And the Raiders drafted Zamir White out of Georgia. Even though he continues to miss practice as the time I am filming this video, the goal is to have him up and ready to go for the regular season, and then he's going to take over for Josh Jacobs next season. All right, y'all, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to get even more interaction with us. We go live every single Tuesday. If you missed it, it's a shame because David Zahn, Raider Ron, man, Jimenez, they all popped in. It got Buddy Bear. It got weird really quick. We had a really good time, I know, at the office, and I'm not going to lie, I'm a little hungover. But you know what? It's all worth it. If you're wondering, what are you talking about? I go live every Tuesday. We do mailbags. We're also an interactive channel. So shout out to Javier, Abel, Garrison, Logan, and then some tall, handsome dude. Appreciate you guys hitting that sub button. Continue to spread the show by sending that link to some diehard Raider fans. Let's now go to the wide receiver room. Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro, those guys are locks. But then besides that, there's been a lot of really good competition at training camp between Keelan Cole, Matt Collins, Demarcus Robinson. They're all battling out there for that receiver spot behind Adams and Renfro. And then Tyron Johnson's made some good plays down the field. I've also heard some good things about Justin Hall, DJ Turner in terms of special teams play. Love the name of Dylan Stoner, but unfortunately, he is not making this roster. I don't know if I've mentioned this before. The number that you see next to these guys is me literally counting out the 53 man in terms of who makes it or not. I believe Keelan makes it. I believe Matt Collins makes it. What could be interesting here about Robinson, and I have said this before, because Tyron Johnson has the speed and he continues to flash at training camp making deep plays, he has an opportunity to make the roster. Now, he if they keep six receivers, I think he ends up making it. If they only want to keep five, they could actually end up keeping Johnson over Robinson because of the extra special team's ability and because of the speed that he just brings to the table. But for this one, I'm going to keep DeMarcus. Let's now look at the tight end room. The last time that I made a video, I had the Raiders keeping four tight ends. That's going to change here today. We know it's Darren Waller, Foster Moreau, but who's going to be that third tight end? Is it going to be Nick Bowers? Is it going to be Horstead, who the Raiders brought in? What about <clears throat> Jacob Hollister? For me, I have never shopped at Hollister. At least it's been a while, but I'm going to throw Jacob in this bag here, and he's going to end up making the team because he's not a great catcher. He's not a great blocker. But he is okay at both of those things. And that is essentially what you're looking for here for the silver and black. Now let's go to the offensive line because essentially that's why I'm making this video for the simple fact of Denzel Good retired. When you look at the line, Colt Miller is a lock. Andre James is a lock. Dylan Parham is a lock. Leatherwood, John Simpson. And it can get kind of interesting after there because there are a lot of question marks, no doubt about it. Before I reveal to you how many offensive linemen and who the offensive line are that I kept, 
How many linemen do you think that the Las Vegas Raiders keep this season? You can go back and look at past years. Doesn't help you all too much because it's a brand new regime. But if you want to go back and look at Carmen Brasillo's lines, go back and look at Josh McDaniel's offensive lines. Historically, they haven't really kept too, too many offensive linemen. But because of the loss of good, the last time I made this video, I kept nine linemen. Well, I'm actually going to keep one extra guy because according to reports out there, somebody who's been looking really, really good at training camp, and yes, I get it, they just threw the pads on on Wednesday, but Alex Bars, he was with Chicago last year. He's played in a few different areas on guard, left guard, right guard. He has some versatility there. The Raiders like that, which is why I think they end up keeping him. Also, Lester Cotton has been getting a lot of run with the first team at right guard. So, I keep Cotton this time. I keep Alex Bars. I did not keep those two players in my last 53-man roster projection. So, we are 26 players in, which means... We got to add a few more guys out there, 27 coming up here. But to make sure that you get all the Raiders content you could possibly want, give us a follow over on Rumble for exclusive Raiders videos. You can see the link down there below at rumble.com slash Raiders Report. If you want to listen to this show like a podcast ad-free, this is where you should go. I'm just being real with y'all. I think you're going to like it. Let's go to the defensive side of the football now. And for the defensive ends, you got the best edge rushing duo in the league, in my opinion, and Max Crosby and Chandler Jones. And then after that, Cleveland Furls, you don't know what you're going to get out of him. Tayshaun Bauer worked with Max Crosby a lot this offseason. Malcolm Koontz, Gary Green. I am a believer that the Raiders end up keeping Furl for the simple fact of they kind of have to. You can cut him, but then you're going to eat $9.98 million. So either you pay him $9.98 million to play, or you cut him and you still pay him $9.98 mil. I'm probably just going to have him on the roster. Malcolm Coons also is, from what I've been told, showing good elusiveness or speed maybe is probably the right way to say it. Good Ben getting around the edge. I think he could have a big season, but he still needs to put on a little bit more muscle and thicken up to take on some of these legit offensive linemen in the NFL. Now let's go to the defensive tackle room because <clears throat> this might be surprising to y'all. I don't know about you, I feel like, you know, there's that, that meme where you're not asleep right away, your girlfriend looks at you, she thinks that you're looking at other women or you're on some, so, some sort of social media dating app. No, I'm thinking about the Raiders defensive tackle room because these guys are keeping me up at night. I don't know how healthy Hankins is. Bilal Nichols is dealing with a knee injury right now. And in terms of who's getting most of the first team reps, it's been Tyler Lancaster, Andrew Billings, Kendall Vickers, Kyle Petko. Luckily, Vernon Butler came back to practice on Wednesday. But for the rookies, Neil Farrell Jr. and Butler, they've been getting a lot of the second team rep in. I think it's because McDaniels, Patrick Graham, they want to see what they have and the interior defensive line of this unit. So the names that you see featured, they're going to make the team. And even though Butler did miss a few days of practice, to me he's still the most reliable option that you have at defensive tackle. If it was up to me, I still would add another player in free agency, whether you're making a deal via a trade, but there's still good names out there on the free agent market that you shouldn't go into week one up against the Los Angeles Chargers and Justin Herbert, who has thrown more passing touchdowns his first two years of his entire career with 69. Nice. But you need to be prepared for that. You need to be ready right out of the gate. So should the Raiders sign a defensive tackle? Y'all know my answer. I'm spamming Y for yes because I just don't understand how you have all this money right now, over $20 million, and you don't make something happen. Let's now go to the linebacking unit here, and it's a clear... Cut top three guys in Denzel Perriman, Divine Diablo, and Jayon Brown. Brown continues to impress the coaching staff with his ability to cover. That's why he was brought in from the Tennessee Titans last season. And then after that, there are a lot of really unknown commodities. I will say a sleeper to keep in mind here is Darian Butler, the UDFA out of Arizona State. I have heard really, really good remarks about him. Also, he has that connection with Antonio Pierce, who coached him at Arizona State for four years from 2017 to 2021. Here's the thing, though. I'm going to trust my gut a little bit. And I'm going to go with somebody who was a winner during OTAs, during mini camps. Kenny Young was impressive. Again, it's not in full pads. But I know the coaching staff has some familiarity there with him. And then Kyler Fackrell. The fact that I haven't heard anything does make me a little bit worried about whether or not he makes the team. But he's another player that knows Patrick Graham's system. And the year that he had 10.5 sacks was in Graham's system. So... 
We'll see what happens, but those are the five players that I believe make it at the linebacking unit. One of the units that was really freaking me out entering the training camp period was the corners. I didn't know what we were going to get, and according to all reports, they're not only competing, they might even be beating the wide receivers, which is pretty eye-popping considering the fact of we know how much talent there are truly is in the Raiders wide receiver room. Rocky Sin looks like a true cornerback one. Nate Hobbs looks excellent. Anthony Averett is lining up next to Rocky Sin as being that number one corner. I have been told that Sam Webb, the UDFA, and I can't think of the school, it's escaping me right now. He actually has been pretty impressive. Amik Robertson, he's at right now as the third outside corner because Trayvon Mullen is down. Also, Darius Phillips was the very first Raiders free agent that this team ended up bringing in. So, Overall, I see them keeping six corners. Rocky Sin, Sam Webb went to Missouri Western. Shout out to Jeremy Chuggs. Type Chuggs down in the chat. Uh, Anthony Averett makes it. Mullen makes it. Nate Hobbs, Robinson, Darius Phillips. Keep an eye on Mullen. Obviously, the Raiders want to keep him around, but if the Raiders aren't 100% confident that he's going to be ready, they might end up keeping a player like Sam Webb because I've been told, again, that young man looks pretty dang good as it stands right now. Now, we still got safeties, and we got special teams to get to. But, man, I hope you guys give me a follow on Instagram. Give me a follow on Twitter. That way you can see all the crazy fun that we had on our Tuesday live show. It's also an easier way to interact with me. Stay up to date on Raiders news, NFL news. I'm tweeting stuff out. I'm posting stuff to my IG story. So, if you could, I would appreciate it. And I think that uh, you guys will stay more informed. So, please, at MitchellRent365. The safety room. Jonathan Abram, Trayvon Merrick. I might actually have to switch up who the starter is because I believe at this point it's the Ron Harmon and it's Trayvon Merrick as your top two safeties. However, because we're getting down there and because I'm going to keep three guys on the special teams, I can only keep four players. I think Roderick Teamer's a good player. I like Tyree Gillespie, Deron Harmon. The Raiders just brought in Matthias Farley. Uh, you got Paulo Mayo, the USC safety, who's related to the Raiders' Uh, running back coach Kennedy Palomalu related to Troy Palomalu. And then Quinteria Cole was actually a UDFA that I did like as well. Here's the thing, though. Merrick, Harmon, Abram, they're going to make the team. The only way Abram doesn't make it is if, I believe, if the Raiders try to trade him away. Is he a liability in coverage? Yes. Is he getting beaten coverage already in training camp? Yes. But he brings the energy. He brings some special teams value. And I'm just going to go with Gillespie because I think he's the best all-around safety compared to some of those other names out there, which then means the final three spots here go to the GOATs. Daniel Carlson, A.J. Cole, and Trent Sieg. Shout out to Trent Sieg for not being the lowest-rated player on Madden for, I think, the first time in his entire career. He is only a 33 overall, but that's because they have to list him as a tight end. Trent I know you're better than that, man. Don't worry. I got your back. All right, y'all. So those are my 53-man roster projection after Denzel Good has decided to hang up the cleats, though. Might come back next year. I know he's tweeting out some interesting stuff. So all I want you to do right now is name a player that I should have kept on the roster. And if you made it this far in the video, I appreciate y'all. Hit that sub button. Turn on those notifications. And make sure you're ready for a fun Raiders season because I promise you, we're going to bring it.